Hey guys, Anthony 4 before diesel This is going to be a really awesome video and I'll warn you straight away, it's going to be a long one because we're going to do an injector replacement job. We've got a whole heap of videos in the VIP group, special stuff for the VIPs, for the clients. Yeah, you can't get in there until you've made a parts purchase, but we've got a lot of information out there on our YouTube channel that's available for anyone for free and I'm taking the time to make this video. It's going to make this job take me a lot longer but it's going to make the job look quick and easy. So beware, I'm going to rip through this, okay, and um, show you how we roll this one. It's an old 0506. It's very, I won't say a little bit, it's quite rough around the edges. You can see all the surface rust and things. There could be some complications. It's even looking pretty nasty under the bonnet, the bonnet liner and all that, right? Um, I reckon if you tried to wash that, it'd probably fall off. So it is kind of a just about get rid of it, but that's not my decision to make. Um, there's some few things that need to be fixed up. This is a Euro 3 in a Hilux. So the Hiluxes are the easiest to work on. And the Euro 3, in case you're wondering how do you tell the difference what I'm talking about, see the EJ, that's a pipe there. You haven't got the EJ cooler. These injectors are different, the pipes are different. You've got to be careful. Again, if I'm not around, just wait to get your injectors off me. You don't want to get the wrong ones. It's happened to people and companies are hard to deal with when they supply the wrong ones. Wrong pipes. Wrong injectors, Chinese copies, remanufactured, other brands, just wait. Wait for the VIP group, wait for the right parts, wait for the best customer service you're going to find anywhere and listen to the videos because I'll tell you when I'm not available and I'll quickly tell you we're about to go on annual leave and if this video comes out before then or during then, whatever the case may be, where we've got our last couple of days, I'll tell you shortly, but we've got to get on with this job. Right, um, it's been given a clean up by the client. It's clean enough, okay? It's not to my standard, but it's clean enough for what it is. We're gonna have to clean a lot of components as we go. We're in a nice clean, have a listen. Clean, quiet, no wind, no dust, nothing getting stirred up. So what I was saying is the Hiluxes are the easiest to work on, okay? And the Euro 3 is the easiest of the Hiluxes. Now this one's got a bit of a lift, I'm feeling it sort of, you know, I'm standing up against the guard here. So we can either let the tires in, it's good it hasn't got a bull bar, makes it a bit easier. So we're going to set this up, we've got a number of videos, we've got about 8 of these videos in the VIP group, okay. This one may get onto YouTube, I'm not sure yet. Um, it could be a, it's a bit of a 1, 2, skip a few, 6, 7, 8, 9, skip a few, however it goes, right. Because if I get busy, I get distractions or batteries go flat or... Phone calls come in, whatever, I've got to stop, whatever, I've got to stop and eat. But just rest assured, there could be some problems with this one because of the circumstances of all the massive amounts of corrosion up this high in the engine bay. You don't really see this in Victoria. It's not something that I've seen before, okay? So it's one of the, let's say, easiest ones, but it could be one of the hardest ones. So bits and pieces, let's get all into right. it. All right, we've got to get some tools organized, eh? Hey? What do we need? I'm going to grab a quarter drive with a 10 mil and a short extension. Toolbox is close by, and I want to get in here, and it all depends how the last person's put everything together, how well we get it apart. So we've got separate videos on removing the intercooler, but it's worth watching more than one because every time we do a video, we say and do different things and different information and different perspectives. So if you get in the VIP group and you watch one of the injector replacement videos and then go and do your injectors and make a mistake, um, well, you probably should have watched more than one because it's a big job. Oh, I didn't get that quite undone enough. Come on, come on, what are you doing? Come on, come on. Oh. And of course, sometimes I've got to concentrate so I stop talking, but what I might do, I mean, you know, 50-50, phone a friend. Some people are going, just put it in time lapse and speed it up. Then others want to see and hear all the details. So what do we do? So what we do is, I think for this one, we might just leave it for now. We're not going to time lapse it yet. So that's undone. Now speed things up a bit. Like I said we were going to do it quick. Quick, 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 you know. Whoop, lost a socket. That's not quick, is it? See when you start doing things quick. Start doing things quick. Always press to release before you start yanking on anything. And try it, it's a bit of a touch you get to learn, I suppose. You need to know exactly how much to press it so it doesn't break. They don't normally break, but 
if you're watching our videos, we had one vehicle. Right, they normally come off pretty straightforward. Though. We had one vehicle. It just fell to pieces. Everything you touched, it just fell to pieces. So, okay, uh, now we need a 12 mil, and I'm looking at the size. I'm looking at the rust and everything I'm going on, I reckon. I reckon there's going to be a lot of reckoning going on with this one. But that oh, could be tight. So I just went straight for the... And you might go, well, you got such a long extension or whatever. It's just more universal when I get to the next one sort of thing. Gives me a bit more room. So if that was short, I'm going to do my knuckles on the intercooler there. So that. So I'm up here where I can go... And just get it undone. And that, you know, it doesn't even want to... I'm going to get the impact driver onto these and zip those off. I just wanted to, I don't think that impact driver would have got those undone. But we want to speed things up a bit, so. I'm going to put these bolts up on, everything's going to go up on the sill of the Hilux because on the, only on the 150, do we see that bolt there? Take note, that's the long one with the washer on it, right? We're going to push the first things we take off to the centre and work our way out to the sides, yeah? Makes sense? You know, you can tag them, label them, colour them, anything you like. For me, I know what they are, I know where they go. Uh, probably wise to put a bit of grease on it before you reinstall them. Okay, so that one didn't go exactly to plan either. So this is one of those videos where, look, we might not get to the end. I can't guarantee you the whole job, right? But we got started, right? That's the main thing. Okay, are all the bolts undone? That's going to be stuck like you know what. Oh, wow, look at that. It just came off easy. So there you go. Maybe it's been off recently. So that's good, right? Bang, we just moved it a little bit like that. We need to disconnect the vacuum line still, so just giving it a bit of a wiggle. It is coming off at the turbo side as well. Now around here, okay, what do we got? You've got the easiest way is to just take it off. The, there's this map filter here that goes onto the map sensor. I'm gonna take that off on the bench. I'm gonna just remove the vacuum line that goes to the throttle body, so. Large flat blade will do the job and we'll just get in there got to get a light set up soon so then I can see what's going on and this is be handy if I put uh, grab the camera and brought it in and showed you exactly where right and that's what's in the other videos if I keep stopping changing position and I can but it's going to be a stop start and I miss bits type thing right so but it's pretty straightforward if you watch the video you will just look you know watch the other videos right watch the what have I forgotten something gee that feels heavy I tell you the uh, Euro 3 ones, because they've got a bit more steel on them. So I'll show you the other side of it, just because we can, right? There it is. And there's, so the dirty old map filter. We're going to replace that as part of the job. Okay. That's what we just slid off, right? That, I'll show you where it came off. So that's just going to go on the bench over here. Okay, we're going to put that covered in mud. So I'd say it's been into Wombat, into a few bog holes and stuff by the looks of it. So it's had a clean up, but it's hard to get that underneath stuff. So, but where was it? Just behind you. You can't quite see it, but I just slid that off there. Okay, and at this point, as soon as I'm reaching to there, we'll undo this plug, press. Okay, you want to be difficult as well. So, you know, you pick a vehicle that you go, this one will be quick, we'll make it a quick video. This whole wiring loom is not connected to the vehicle. There's a bracket missing that goes on the back here. So normally you would have that there. This one's missing. The Klein is going to take care of getting that replaced. You know, grab one at the Toyota deal or the wreckers. It's not something we keep. Haven't had that one missing before. Just going to grab a rag to cover the turbo inlet. Make sure nothing falls down there. Not that anything would fall down there, but we're just going to cover that up with a nice clean rag. Okay. Yeah, to make things easier, obviously we need to take this side off the valve cover, but we don't need to get to it yet. Let's start over this side. You can't quite see, so I'm just going to go like that and unplug the MAF sensor right then we need a little flat blade you really need to be watching our Facebook pages if you want to know when we're available for parts and stuff because as we get busier 
it's getting more and more difficult to just do everything every day. So Monday is parts, dedicated parts day. That's the day. You need to get to me early. If you if you hit me for parts 4 p.m., too late. I only work school hours, okay? So there's a chance I might not get it done anyway. But if everybody does Monday morning, early as possible. So I understand the WA guys. Still in bed asleep. Alright. Two 10 mil bolts coming out of there. Where are we putting those? You guessed it, up here. Next one's in, right? And when you go, what, what's next? Because you're going to put it back together in the opposite order of what you pulled it apart. Okay, this wiring loom, we need to unplug. Yeah, what do I need? I need a milk crate to reach that, don't I? Milk crates? Nah, no such thing as a milk crate. One. And it didn't break. It makes a clicking sound. Sometimes they break. That one's not broken, but I've never had an injector clip like that break. But I bet sometimes they break. When I say that, I've heard from other people. Different climates. This one's a bit stuck. Then you get that. Okay, so push it. Then push the clip just nicely. It's kind of almost a two-handed job sometimes because you need to press that and then have two hands on the plug. Oh, that one's stuck as. Quite stuck. All right. What is going on there? Just give the fingers a rest because that's what happens basically. You end up, you know, you just end up with really sore fingertips from pressing on there. Get in there again, two hands. One finger to press, it's definitely resting for there we go this time. So you just gotta give the fingers a rest sometimes. On the Hilux only, you can get the wiring loom completely out of the way. Right? There's probably gonna be some more. No, there's no more clips because it's uh, all missing, right? So what we can do now is just gently sit back there. We've got a couple more plugs here on the side. Better turn your back around this way or you'll be missing out. Two plugs here. Carefully press to press to release and gently pull. Sometimes you've got to pull and wiggle. That's it. There's a lot of mud there, you know. They just get see all the dirt inside there. You probably can't, but you'll have to take my word for it. Right, next one. Right, that's that's about it, almost it for the wiring. I like to get things right out of the way. So I'm gonna unplug the two fuel filter plugs. It's two plugs on the fuel filter. All right, so now that wiring, fuel filter wiring part of the loom, that's out of the way. This is out of the way. Now we can just slip the fuel filter up a little bit on its bracket to take it out of its bracket. We're not disconnecting anything. We're just gonna go, I'm gonna undo this clip actually, off that fuel line, swing it around. We're just gonna sit the fuel filter down in such a way. Now we've got all this better access here. I don't know if, you, hopefully you can see what I can. Do you see what I see? Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, I could undo that clip. I'm just gonna take the 10 mil bolt out there and get this bit of wire completely out of the way. So, impact driver, we'll get in there quickly. All right, then we're gonna get that completely out of the way as well. The more stuff out of the way, the merrier, if you know what I mean. We'll just sit that bolt back in place because it's not in the way of anything. Then you know where it goes. There is a, another wire that's been connected. What's that? What is that? What's that that's been connected? Oh, no. What? What's going on here? Oh, no. What's that? That's crazy. I don't even understand that. Has that been cut off? Is that an earth? Let's change things around there. That's a bit bizarre, that is. There's not normally an earth there. Where does that normally go? I'd have to look at another highlight. So... It appears that one of the wires that comes out of the wiring loom is connected on the top stay of the manifold, which we're taking that bolt out anyway, but I'm not sure. There must usually be an earth there that goes somewhere, be honest. I, the bit of the tape's falling apart here. It needs to be retaped. So there's a bit of auto electrician work to do. We could do that sort of stuff, but it's quite time consuming. So we've got another guy who does the auto electrical type stuff. So, there's other stuff to fix up as well with this job. Alright, so, you can see already things are starting. Let's get this off and out of the way, because that'll open things up a bit. And that's what we want to do. We want to get some progress happening. I just grabbed a 12mm deep reach. Usually works pretty well, just because it's a bit deeper. But, oh no, I should, I should have stuck with the other extension. Stick, stick with the uh, single hex. Six point with that long extension, because, you know what? Whoops. <laughs> Um, 
I was going to say, it's not going to come undone anyway, like the other ones, right? I should have known better. Should have known better. Anyway, I think there's a song for that. There's a song for just about everything, isn't there? Come on, would you? Let's go get the big bar in a minute. Oh, got it. <laughs> that was tight. <laughs> a little bit over specification. So, we'll now get the bottom bolt out first. All right, this speeds things up a bit. Right, so four nuts and bolts. To save a bit of confusion for you guys, don't throw them, these ones up on the sill. Take your throttle body, right? And I'll tell you, just the other day on a service inspection for the first time, I found bottom bolt missing and the top one loose. Okay? Um, so just be aware who you let work on your vehicle. The, four, the two nuts and bolts, I'll go put these on the bench all together. Again, furthest away, just better order of business for you come back and you know where it all goes. Although it's all going to get changed up because we're cleaning all this up anyway. Okay. Now, next, we want to get a couple of, uh, what are we going to take off here? You know, I'll be quite honest, it's been a while since I've done a Euro 3. I'm getting rusty. I've got to pack injector kits for these things. I sort of forget what gaskets we need, so we need the one throttle body gasket. How tight are these ones? Yeah, that one went all right. Okay, so you can see what bolts on. Man, I'm going to get the big bar. I'm over this. Okay, we've got the half inch. Just got to find an adapter. This one will do. Half inch. The same. 12mm, same extension, and hopefully life's a bit easier. We could have gone a shorter extension, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. Yeah, that was tight. Okay, is there a third one? There should be. Hidden somewhere? No, maybe there's not. I can't remember. See, I'm telling you, I promise you. It's been Euro 3 like this. We see maybe, I don't know, one, two, three a year, maybe. Um, yeah, no, just two bolts on the Euro 3. There you go. So. Get the bolts out first and then you can see which vacuum lines need disconnecting and you can choose which ones you want to go for first, right? So, in this case, there's the two bolts. I'm going to pop those up on the sill at least for now. Right, the extension there as well. Now, what looks easy to me, or easy enough, see there's this earth here in the way, so I'm going to get rid of that. So that'll be a 12 mil as well. And the 12 mil was left over here on the vehicle. So, let's mess with that. I'll probably forget to put it back there because it doesn't belong there. Or I don't know where. Where's the earth? That's not on there. It must go somewhere. I don't know. People changing, re-engineering Toyotas for us, you know. So, we'll just get this off. Because this bracket, well, the Euro 3 actually. Yeah, no, you do. You do still have to get this out of the way. That's nice and tight as well. So every nut and bolt on this vehicle, by the sounds of it, is going to be... Actually, that bracket's pushing out on it. Okay, so that's a bit odd as well, because the bracket is pushing out against the bolt. So I'm pulling the bolt out of the hole now. And the bracket, even though the bottom's tight, it's sitting out about 15 mil. so there was a pressure. See what I mean? That's not a Toyota fitting, guys. See that? Anyway... We'll pop that over here. It's obviously an earth or something, which I can't remember on this wiring loom where it is meant to belong. And that bolt from the state, that will go up the top here. So the other two bolts from the bracket, they can all go up there together. They're basically the same. Now, as I said, you get this off, and then you can see the vacuum lines, you've got to disconnect. What I'm gonna make a suggestion is, disconnect the two at the EJR valve and the one at this end. So quite often what we use, demonstrated in other videos a tool like this it's a heater hose removing tool right it's meant to go in and hoses but it also works really well for vacuum lines 
you just get in there and you work it back and forward left and right and that'll crack the seal and then you just bang there it is it's come off like that that vacuum line can stay sitting there now trying to use them there you may rip it open so not a good idea so we'll ditch that to the bench grab the big flat blade the big flat blade works really well you just get right in the base of the vacuum line right make sure you're at the base and you pull up like that that's one off the one with the filter goes at the top, all right? In case you decide to do this on your Euro 3. This is why it's worth being in the VIP. And this is probably, end up might just end up being in the VIP only, all right? All right so that's off, all right? That's that assembly as it sits. One vacuum line there, two there. Filter at the top in case you decide to do it yourself and you need to come back to the video to work it out. That can go on the bench. And what we'll do, we'll grab the two bolts from the inside of the three and just put the two bolts with it as well. And some people, if this gets on YouTube public, um, they're going, oh, you're being a bit anal, they're all the same, doesn't matter. Yes, we are a bit anal, bad luck, okay. These E-jars stay the cleanest of them all, and the worst of it will be down here, not up there, of course, because the E-jar comes in down at this area here, so next we need to get off one, two. So this might end up, actually, I might make a shorter version of this, and the longer version will be an injector replacement one at a later date. That's a good idea, Anthony. Yeah, we like the sound of that. So this is a... This just changed. This video just changed because I realised we've got that full detail EJR clean video. But, there's a big but. Let's use the but, since we've got the big bar here. But we haven't shown it on a Euro 3. Right, let's see what else we can get to while we've got these tools in here. Yeah, they're all really tight, eh? Unfortunately, I don't know where. I don't know if that's going to work, but on the other side again. Grotty thing this is, isn't it? Okay. So we'll get the zipper now and zip it. So this could be the full detail EJR clean, but you know, you don't need too much detail. Watch the other one. So we'll make it a short version of that one. Basically, zipping a part of Euro 3 and nut from there. Remember where that went? Another nut. And a bolt, a bolt, a bolt. Okay, so, bolt. So just sit those together, have that one for the stay on its own, those three together, pretty straightforward. All you've got left is this one at the front here. Oh, I'm oh, that wasn't good, was it? Yeah, and no, I had jammed the tool in there between the pipes and everything. Not that much, just enough to go, oh, it was getting a bit of resistance. So we'll just pull that out by hand that way. That's just for the, the stay or the bracket. Those three go all together. Then this will just go bada bing, right? So there's one of the gaskets you need. Oh, we'll go pop that on the bench. We're getting toward the mess now. We're getting toward the mess area. But like I said, these don't have to meet the strict emission rules. So they're not as bad. Okay. What we'll do, we'll continue. I'll zoom in a little bit. And we'll just get in there. Right. So maybe you can see a bit more. And what are we going to do now? We're going to... Grab the 10 mil with the four or six inch extension. Give me a sec. We need to unplug the common rail, the plug on the common rail, okay? So that's at the front of the common rail, so we need to reach down near this pipe here, find the plug, usually best done with a light. I haven't got a light out yet, how's that, eh? Um, so I'm working in the dark virtually, going by feel. You've got to find which side the little tab is to release the plug, which in this case is not found yet. It's at the top, I think. Is that the top? I'm pressing. Yep. And it just added click noise, and I'm pulling the plug back. No, I'm going to need two hands. See, this is where they're a pain, and you can't get two hands in there. And the mud stuck it on really well, but the plug's off. Job done. All right, so... Don't think that you're gonna just knock it off. You know, if you're really good, well, there's plenty of people that are better than me, of course. 
He said, if you're better than me, you'll get it done quicker and easier. You don't even need to watch this. What are you doing? You know? But, of course, warning. Warning, okay. So there's the longer one we use. That's ready to go with a um, seed chrome socket on it. And this is the shorter one I was using ready to go with a uh, snap-on socket. So there you go. All six-point sockets, right? So usually, you'll get in there to the front of that pipe. There's two 10 mils. I can't get the camera in there and show you. It takes hours to do it that way. That's why it's in the VIP. So you kind of got to pay for it. You do, I suppose, because at the end of the day, mucking around with the camera, I need a light. I'm going to shine a light in there. Give me a sec. Show me the light. So, it really takes a lot more time to stop and move around the camera. And when it pays, as it keeps, oh God, they're all, no wonder I couldn't get the socket on there. That's an absolute mess. Got a delivery, back soon. Literally had a delivery from Repco. But see, we didn't make you wait. We paused it. Oh my God, you should see the corrosion on these bolts down there. I don't know if they're ever gonna come undone. That's an absolute mess. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah, let me see if I can get a socket onto it. No wonder it wouldn't go on, see? Dramas. Dramas, let's see if it's a big drama or a little one. Because <clears throat> the socket, the way it would normally go on, didn't want to go on. I think that's on. Mm, yeah, it's going to be... If these snap off, that won't be good, would it? So how much, how far are we going to go before we go, let's not go? Ooh. Wow. Okay. The thing is there, you know, you can spray all your life, but getting in there, getting in there is the problem. Access. Let's give it a bit of the usual stuff. The thing is, you know, I don't know, you don't know. Hey, nasty. Okay. Mm. Think. This is the thing, right? Think. Think, think, think. I say that, don't I? So let me think. And there's people thinking for me and they're going, oh, do this, do that. And guess what? I'm not going to see the comments for later, but put them in there anyway. But don't worry, we'll be okay. So, mm, let's try out some other ones while we're waiting for that to hopefully penetrate. Let's see what happens at this end of the pot. Yeah, that's not too bad, as expected, really. I am expecting <laughs> worse than normal now, though. All right, okay, so they come undone, that's good. Okay, so if they don't come undone, it's all good. So it's sometimes best left alone. This is what I'm saying, think, best left alone. Um, you know, if people want to put blank plates in or plates with a seven mil hole, it's a problem if you want to do that. It's gonna be a problem later on this job with these rusty, rusted away fuel pipes. Um, guys, in case you didn't know, new injectors, new pipes. That doesn't mean new pipes, and then six months later I'll get my injectors and I can you can reuse the pipes three times on the same injectors. New injectors, new pipes. You can say, oh, I'm wrong and I did this and I've done that. You can do whatever you want. There's this thing called luck. I mean, if you're lucky, that's fine. We don't deal in luck. Okay, luck doesn't work. Luck's not reliable. Okay. Should we risk it and think we're going to get lucky with these studs coming undone? Or, I know they're really tight in the head. That is definite. So it doesn't matter if they come out anyway. Let's put the damn, and I don't want to put a bigger bar, I'd rather use the small one. So I can feel what's going on. So, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is, we sprayed it. Let's see if we can get, how about this? We'll try the other one, see what it says. Okay, she's on. It's on, now let me get in a position. Where hopefully I can. Oh, 
Yeah, no, I don't like it at all. Don't like. And, uh, you know, I don't know that it's worth the risk because it can be very difficult to get in there and fix up those studs depending where if they snap off or not or whatever. So what we're going to do with this one, we're going to leave that pipe in place. So this is what I mean, think, right? You've got to think. I can go ahead. Hey. If I just want to make money, what I do is I just go for it and I bust them and then I go, mate, this happened. Look at the video. I can even show you in the video, right? But, you know, I could ring him up and say, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want me to risk busting it? But I can tell you, for what? So the car's 16 years old, okay? It's about an 05 or 06. It's the early one. Let me have a look in the plate. It says, where is it? Where's the year? It's an 05, right? March 05, must be one of the first ones, right? So, the vehicle's 16 years old. It's a lower emission, so which means less EJ float, which is why you can get away with having this pipe here. So what that says to me, although it'd be nice to put a plate in there, in my opinion, it's not worth the risk of creating more work busting things that could cost many hundreds of dollars in labor to R&R &R other components and be able to fix that up. Worst case scenario, you can't get it out of the head and really you've got to get the head off to work on it. So ending up costing him thousands. So this is where it pays. You've got to know where enough's enough. And I'm not saying I've got the most experience, but I've got a bit and my experience says on those bolts down there at the head, there's one bolt out of there. My experience says Enough's enough. So if you're doing an EGR clean, because this is like so we changed to this is the EGR clean video on a Euro 3 Hilux, early Hilux. Nice and easy job, really. Um, you know, the other one's full detail, pull it apart, put it back together. On this one, we probably won't actually put it back together because you can see how simple it was to get it apart and you just put everything back in the opposite order. Then again, you may get in the VIP group and see the rest of this video. I'll show you what you're looking at on the actual EGR valve itself. See how that compares to, uh, bring this light up here, right? Eh? How's that? Is that a good idea? Do you like that? Right here, how, how you like that now? All right, so, don't want to get too much reflection going on. How about that? Um, not too bad. I mean, uh, EGR, it's not what you want. You don't want, you know, I'm just looking at the surface under that gasket, and that is disgusting. This thing's absolutely a mess, kind of thing. So, you know, uh, with our injector kit, we'll supply these gaskets, right? This one, obviously, because that's a mess. You know, this one needs to be replaced, the one above it. So, this is a good little, we'll re summarize the gaskets required. So, with a Euro 3, you'll get one of those, you'll get two of those and the square one. So, one, two, the square one, that. That one usually can reuse, people put a plate in there. Like I said, that's solid still. I like this, I'm gonna just tell you a quick bit about this before you go, and before I go, and we may call it a video. Maybe, maybe not, and there'll be another one, but at this point, um, we'll have a quick look in the manifold as well, actually, to show you. I just want to show you what you're dealing with. So we'll bring the camera down over in a moment and show you in there exactly what's going on. But this is basically the majority. Look, if you, you don't have to remove the wiring loom, but it's not hard to remove the wiring loom and get it all, all this stuff out of the way for you. You know what I mean? To continue on and do the injectors, obviously, having all this stuff out of the way allows us to access all the fuel pipes at the common rail. Um, like I said, there'll be another video continuing on. I'll bring you in and show you what the manifold's like so that you can know that it's it's kind of like you don't need to go, oh no, but I wanted a plate in there and because these don't flow as much, they don't build up as much for that reason. It's been like that for 16 years. It'll be good for another 16 after these injectors and everything's done if all the maintenance is right and it starts getting looked after better than it was before. Let's go in and have a look at it. Here we go. Dun 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 <laughs> anyway, right, have a look, right, you can see the bottom of the manifold, you can even see the shape of it, right, the only mess is that little bit in the EGR valve and around the outside there, right, so, 
Um, still, we've got to clean it. We'll clean what we can as far as we can reach in, scrape and vac, get what we can out of there. But get the picture, right? Get the picture. Can you get the picture? You're a bit upside down there. Sorry about that. Um, that's the worst of it, what you're looking at. Kind of like what's in the EJ valve and right there. Any of those bits, we don't want them falling in, so we're going to vac it out. We're going to clean it all up. But I hope you know what I mean where I say... You've got to make it's always a compromise like suspension putting oh do i go the softer spring or the heavier spring the medium spring it's always a compromise and so is this oh but i really wanted the plate in but is it but is it worth it i'll take you down try and show you what that, the heads of those bolts look like and that's the heads of the bolts it doesn't show you what's in the hole but right, can you see the bottom one it's about the middle of the picture i'll try and get some light in there mm. Mm. and the top one Try and get some light again as well, right? without getting it in your way, right, I don't know, whatever, right, doesn't matter, close enough, you get the idea, so the one at the, not the top of the two, the one underneath it is the top bolt, um, it did make a little crack like it was going to turn, but, you know, when they crack, they sort of turn a, a twelfth of a turn and crack and then relock again, like, so nothing really cracked loose, so, I won't even nip it up, that'll be fine. It's never gonna come undone, it'll never leak. I think the best option is to not touch it in the customer's best interest overall. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Um, you know, was it worth the risk to put a plate in? Because really, that's the only difference, what it was about, and you know, we don't do that anyway, but of course the client's probably standing here next to me, and he's gonna wanna put it in, but you know, he doesn't wanna be famous either. You may not be here either. You may have given me instructions to or not to. And I may have said it's for off-road use only. Uh, or we don't do that. Or you've already done it yourself. But it doesn't look like he's done it himself. So we've got to get to that bottom bolt on the stay there to get that out of the way. To get to these pipes on the common rail. That's next. But I want to make this a um, Euro 3 early Hilux EJR clean video. Um, you don't need me to show you how to clean stuff. We've got other videos. Watch the full detail EJR clean video. If uh, you like this one, that one goes for a bit longer. Of course, it's got more detail. It'll be a bit different. It'll get you educated on the later Euro, you know, with a EJR cooler there instead of the pipe, which is what most people have got. Um, you know, in here under the pipes, and the pipes are a bit different and all that. Um, yeah, so basically what we do is we scrape, and then we use the cans of Red Degrees, and then we use the cans of, uh, the bottle of Kenco, Works really well, comes up shiny clean like new. As far as this goes, um, that's a video um, for Euro 3 um, EGR removal for cleaning. We'll call it something along those lines. Please, if you liked it, give us the thumbs up. And if you want to get in the VIP group and see the rest of it, you know what to do. Purchase your injector kit or your big front engine kit or your fr front wheel bearing front hub kit or your Dobson suspension kit for your Prado. Injector kits obviously for high luxes as well. We don't do high aces unfortunately, and we can only supply plate uh, kits and parts to plates. We're not we're not supplying plates. What do you think? This is a restaurant or something? Anyway, <laughs> um, to to us people in Australia, Australia wide, no problem. We do it all day, every day. Not really. We brought that back to Monday. It's a massive day on Monday. Please get in Monday, Melbourne time, from 8 a.m. with your text messages. The phone doesn't ring. Uh, name, vehicle details, what you need. Please make sure you've searched and watched the relevant videos first. There's one video called Buying My Kits. Watch all of those, all the re relevant ones in there to the parts you're interested in. Once again, please give us a thumbs up if you like that. We took the time to make it. And subscribe, turn the bell on. We've got better videos and even better ones coming your way, like the rest of this. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.